Let's try to understand how to determine general term for a given sequence. Now, let's see, what is a term? Well, here are a few sequences for us. The first one says 1, 3, 5, 7, right? In this sequence, these are the terms. This is called the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, right? So, the terms are the different elements in our sequence. So, those are the terms. The so first element, second element, third element, and fourth element, and so on. And these numbers 1, 3, 5, 7 are called the term value. So, and normally what happens, how we write it or represent it, we write normally this, this as first term. We write this as T1 and this as T2, right? Second term. So, T is the term and the subscript tells us nth term in general. So, we will have T3 is 5 and then we have T4 as 7, right? So like this, we can write Tn, and Tn is the nth term of our sequence, right? And that nth term is called the general term. So when we ask a question saying determine the general term for given sequences, that means Tn. And what is T1? T1 is 1, and T2 is 3, T3 is 5. So these 1, 3, 5, 7 are values of the term. So these are term values, okay? So what is the value of third term? So the value of third term is 5. That is how you have to see the sequence. And in a sequence, this order is very, very important. It cannot be changed. So the terms are fixed. So this is the first term. We'll write it as T1. Second term, T2. Third term, T3. And 7 is fourth term in this given sequence. And in general, we'll have Tn, right? Now, this seems to be an infinite sequence. When we write like this, dots like this, it means it is never ending, right? So, this type of sequence will be called an infinite sequence, right? Now, the question before us is to find the value of Tn. Like, how can I find Tn? So that could be found by studying the pattern. For example, and then you know, we relate term number with term value. Then it is easy for us to find the relation, right? Say, how is one T1 related to the value of T1? How is T2 related to the value of T2, right? And how is T3 related to the value of T3? From here, we see, we can see the pattern, and we see the pattern is actually increasing by 2, right? So, if we go from first term to the second term, then we say, well, plus 2, right? So, if we do plus 2 each time, then we get our next term, right? So, one way of writing this Tn could be, a recursive formula where we can write Tn as equal to Tn minus 1 plus 2. So where is we are saying that add 2 to the previous term. So that is a way of writing a general term and this particular way of writing general term is called recursive formula where we are involving the previous terms. Well one disadvantage of this term is that if I ask like what is the hundredth term then you'll have to really calculate 99 terms to get the hundredth term right starting from whatever is given to you right so this is not a very good approach most of the time this is a good approach to generate a sequence right now in general term when we say we are trying to find a formula which is kind of not recursive if not mentioned, right? If the question says find the recursive formula, then this could have been the right answer. Okay. Now that means we have to find some way or the other relation between the term number and its value. So let's try to relate them. So 1 is 1, 2 is 3, okay. So 2 is 
3 and 3 is 5, 4 is 7. Second, we also see that they are going up by 2. That means 2 has to play a good role in it, right? So let's try this. If I do 2 times 2, the term number is 4. And how will I get 3 from it? Minus 1. Okay, does it work other places? 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 minus 1 is 5. It works. 2 times 4 is 8. And 8 minus 1 is 7. It works. Okay. So, well, that could be a good way of starting, right? So, we may say for nth term. So, we see how is that formula working. So, we say term number. So, let me write term number here. And the value here, right? So, we say term number is 1. And the value is 1. So, how are we trying to figure it out? We say term number times 2 minus 1. So we are trying to give a formula which is like 2 times term number, let term number be n minus 1, right? Yes, it works. Term number is 2, that is t2. So if I put 2 here, I get 2 times 2, 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Yes, it works. And how about 3? If I write 3 here, 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5, right? So like this, if we go on, then we can figure out that this works perfectly fine. Therefore, we can give a general formula here as Tn equals to 2 times n minus 1. Now, the beauty here is, now if I want to know what is the hundredth term, you can put n as 100 here, right? When you put 100 here, so you can write T of 100 equals to 2 times 100, right? Which is 200 minus 1. So it is 199. You see that? Straight, you get the answer. So that is a general term formula in this particular case, right? And the advantage with this general term is that it is not dependent on the previous value. That one is also correct. But then you know need to know n minus 1 value to find the n value, correct? And that type of formula is called recursive formula. Well, let's look at the next question. Let's say this was our question number one and now let's do question number two. Here, the terms are that T1 is one, right? Let's write that. So T1 is equal to one for us, that's the value. T of two is four for us. T of three is nine for us. Do you find a relation between these numbers? And t of 4 is 16. 16 is 4 square. 9 is 3 square. And then 4 is 2 square. 1 is 1 square. Therefore, looking into this pattern, we can say tn equals to n square. Correct? So, 4 is 4 square. And you get a general term. So, in sequences, you have to kind of relate term number to its value. To figure out a formula, right? So, let's try another question. This kind of a fraction looks complicated. But what we can do is look at separately for numerator and denominator. Well, so in the numerator, we see that the term numbers, this is term 1, this is term 2, this is term 3, this is term 4, right? So, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. That means for Tn, how can I write Tn? So, Tn in the numerator is just number n, right? Because it's just same. How about the denominator? 1, first term has got 2. That is 1 more, right? 2, 3, 3, 1 more. So, if it is 1 more, then I can write Tn as n divided by n plus 1. Does it make sense? Let's try it. If, if we write t4, then n is 4 for me, and denominator is 4 plus 1, 5. Yes, I get the term. So, this formula works. So, a formula which works for already generated numbers will work for the numbers to come. And therefore, we can say that this is our general formula, right? So, this is a way of creating or finding out a general term 
for a given sequence. Okay, so the key here is to relate term number with the term value and see look for the pattern and once you find or figure out that pattern is simple to write down the general term right at times it could be very complicated also okay I hope you understand we'll do many examples and some questions later to practice this thank you